process that they're going to have to yeah. go through. I think there's things they got to go through. I mean, you know, this is probably, it's probably a really good question for Matt, but I think there's a foundational way that they teach the offense that you can't really skip steps. Uh, I think the opportunities will change, you know, when you have young receivers, when kind of where we're at uh, for some of those guys. Um, but um, I don't think uh, you can skip steps in, in, in players' progression. Brian, what do you think Alan Lazard can be for you guys? I'm excited to see what he can be for us, you know, kind of in a different role, you know. Um, Alan's a very confident guy. Uh, every time we've given him opportunity, he's produced. Um, so with these new opportunities, um, I'm excited to kind of see him grow and develop. Um, but I think uh, the sky's the limit for him. I think he could be a really good player in this, in this league. He has been a really good player for us. Um, so I think, I think he's excited for the opportunity as well. Brian, after the draft, you called that wide receiver room, I think, not settled. Mm -hmm. Would that still be a fair assessment? I don't think our team's settled, right? I mean, it's kind of a constant process, and we're, getting, we're, we're in practice one. So there's, you know, through this course of the next six weeks as we head towards the beginning of the regular season, you know, part of this is kind of seeing where we're at, what we have, and what we can count on, and what we, you know, what we maybe can't count on. So that's part of the process for the whole team, um, and that's a big challenge as we go forward is, is making sure we know what we know and, and also know what we don't know. How about wide receiver specific, though? Yeah, I mean, again, we're, we're going into practice. When I'm really excited about all those guys, and but if we get to a point that we feel, you know, that we need more, then we'll we'll certainly address it at that time. But um, um the roles that we expect some of these young guys to play. We want to give them that opportunity to go out there and see if they can do it. What is your expectation for getting Christian and, and Sammy back? And how important is it to get them back in the sense that they've never been here yet? Yeah, yeah. Sammy's a very short-term thing. I mean, you never want any guys to miss any time because, um, you know, you, it's all valuable. Um, but, but Sammy will be very short to me. I think you'll see him out here pretty soon. Uh, you know, Christian was one of those things. We came out of OTAs, and there was, um, I think there was kind of a thought process. We could, you know, do you want to try to push through the season and fi finish this after after the 2020 season, or should we just go ahead and do it now? We just did it now, so he'll miss a little bit of time here in camp, but uh, it's not a nothing long term. Hey Brian, what did it mean to you to get the contract done? Excuse me. I think at the end of OT, at the end of mini camp or OTAs, you said you were at least cautiously optimistic about Dave being ready for the start of training camp. Did anything happen between now and then, or just how concerned are you now about maybe his availability to start? Yeah, well, I know we've talked about this quite a bit. Um, I can tell you this, you know, I'm not a doctor and I, that's not my expertise. So uh, as soon as they clear him, then he'll be ready to go. I can tell you, though, from what I've seen, uh, I know Dave's doing everything he can. And um, I know Goody kind of got into, you know, what transpired and, you know, prior to us even starting the off season. So you know, the, none of these are just always clear cut and some guys recover at a different rate or, you know, have, there's different variances in terms of some of those injuries and, and just in how severe they are. And unfortunately he had, he had a pretty big injury. Given what, you, given what you knew about his injury, New Year's Day 2021, how surprised are you that it's, it's the recovery has lasted this long? Well, I've never been a part of something like this. So, yeah, I mean, I think any time it's a first, you are a little bit surprised. But um, at the same time, I've got a lot of trust and faith in, in not only our people here, but in, in terms of what Dave, just the effort that he puts in each and every day to, to be at his best. I mean, he is he's a pro's pro. So, um, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. And... Uh, when he's ready to go, we'll be excited to have him back out there. Yeah, with, with Christian, going to miss a little bit of time, you told us, um, what, how do you get him caught up when he gets back? Is there any concern given just how much I think you probably want him to be a part of your offense? Yeah, I think that's go going to be a challenge. Um, no question, because there's nothing like reps, especially full speed reps. I think Christian's a... Um, He's been pretty impressive in terms of how fast he was able to pick everything up, you know, during our off season into OTAs. And um, I know he's he's working hard. And I think, you know, Vrabel does a great job with those guys, getting them, you know, up to speed. But there's still nothing like those those game reps, whether it's preseason reps or practice reps. Um, so it, it, it will be a process. That's all I can say to it. And I don't really have a whole lot of expectations as to when he'll get caught up to speed. It's just, I just, what we're looking for is just 
you know, that those, those improvements each and every day from a mental standpoint, but there's nothing like getting out there, especially with a guy like Aaron, you know, with how, how good he is, you know, pre-snap and being able to subtly signal or just give a guy a look and them to understand what that means. Yeah, sticking with the receivers, man, obviously Christian maybe changes some of this, but um, you have the three veteran guys. Do you go into this focusing on those three veteran guys to get them ready and on the same page, or do you try to force feed some of those younger guys in uh, just to see what they've got right away? I think it's a fluid situation, and we're, we're – I know you guys love it, especially Nagler. I can see you smirking at me right there. Uh, we're going to take it one day at a time. And, uh, <laughs> and just, it's going to be fluid, though. That's all I can tell you. And it, it's going to be a process. And, you know, I think we're going to try to put those guys in situations to, to see where they're at um, throughout, whether it's, again, whether it's, uh, you know, in practice or maybe playing some of those younger guys a little bit more in the preseason than we've done in years past. So what's up with Aaron had, what, 12 snaps, 15, whatever, during the mini camp. What does he look like now from what you've seen, and then how are you going to handle, you know, how many throws he has to start out, having not been in the offseason with that? Sure. He, he looks great coming in. I mean, that was a pretty impressive clip of him yesterday coming in, uh, you know, like, uh, what's his name? The actor. Nick Cage. Yeah, Nicholas Cage. Sorry, I'm not much of a movie guy, but uh, no, he looks he looks good. He looked good in the run test, and I think that's something that we always kind of monitor with all the quarterbacks, uh, just in terms of the number of throws that they get. And uh, certainly, we did last year, and, and we'll follow a similar protocol as how we how we have in the past. Matt, it's obviously not a one for one replacement with Sammy and, and Devontae, but you worked with Sammy Watkins before. Uh, different situation with Christian. How important is it to get him, in, you know, kind of indicating what are you going to do and, and what can he bring? Yeah, it's it's all the guys, right? I mean, just there's there's nothing like those reps with a guy like number twelve. I mean, that's as easy as I can put it for you. So it's important to get all those guys as many reps with him as possible, whether it's you know full speed or walk through, because he he has. Uh, a great way about him. He's always he's always testing them, and so uh, he might do something that signals something that we're not even thinking about, just just to test the guys. So you always have to be on your toes. Matt, following up on what Bill was asking about the young wide receivers, whether it's Dobbs or whoever, do, do they get the fire hose treatment? Do they get all three spots. They have to learn all three spots, or do you bring them along kind of individually, depending on what you think they can handle? Yeah, I think it's more you want to put them at one spot and then. You feel pretty good with them in that spot. And, and the thing is, it, it's kind of um, maybe a little misleading because we have so many different formations where, you know, typically you think your X is your split end into the boundary, but we have formations where he ends, ends up lining to the slot or, or shoot even to the formation strength. So, like, it, it's a little misleading in terms of X, F, Z, in terms of just pigeonholing those guys into that particular position. It's so important for our guys, number one, to learn the formations, especially in that room, just so you know exactly where you're lining up. But everything we do from a concept is, is you, have to, you have to learn it conceptually. So it's if I'm at number one, if I'm at number two, if I'm at number three, um, that's how we kind of teach those concepts. Isn't the unknown at tackle? With